Are drum set and method books absolutely necessary? Do we all really need to meticulously work through them? For instance, what if I'm a rock drummer or a country drummer and I don't need the technical jazz stuff or the rudimental snare stuff? I'll be wasting my time playing exercises, right? I want to play real music. I want to play real drums. Well, today we're tackling the subject of book learning. We'll decide whether method books are a must, and I'll show you some of my favorites. We'll talk about some great method books as we go. Welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer, where we talk about non-glamorous things like practicing and method books and all the nitty gritty. Hey, if that's you and you're new to the channel, I hope you'll subscribe and join this community of all of us who are working to become better drummers. First off, yes, I'm only talking about three method books and I know there's a lot out there and I'm gonna leave out some great ones. That doesn't mean that those aren't great. These are just my three personal favorites that I've worked through in my learning career. First off, Stick Control by George Lawrence Stone. This is a really old book. It's been around for not quite a hundred years, but the original copyright, I believe, was 1935. So that's a long time ago. And this is one of those books that has stayed in print regularly since then. And it's basically one of those drumming Bibles that everybody works through. What this book does is essentially what the title is. It teaches you how to control your sticks better. It starts out by taking you through some of the basic rudiments through singles, doubles, paradiddles. And the first three pages of the book are just eighth notes but all those eighth notes have different stickings. So those stickings go from doubles to paradiddles to other combinations and variations and like right, 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 left, 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 and all these different patterns that you take slow, that you take fast. And so what all these do is they split your brain in two and you're working on different random hand-to-hand -hand patterns. This is cool for a lot of reasons, um, great solo ideas, but it's improving your ability to play syncopated patterns because you've got each hand doing random things. And that's a lot of what we do as drum set players. This translates to drum set very well. You can even get creative with the stick control patterns and you can play the right hand part with your foot, the left hand part with your left hand on the snare. So you can turn this into drum set grooves and make it a drum set method book if you want to. But stick control goes from the eighth notes into all sorts of different note values and roles and so it works up your rudimental snare playing your concert snare playing just all the basic technique involved in doing that and it translates to drum set very well because of that syncopated coordination aspect up next advanced techniques for the modern drummer by jim chapin this book is basically a very clear cut here's how to build extreme high level independence between all four limbs it's all taught from the jazz standpoint and most of the exercises are centered around that jazz ride pattern and then playing different note values different feels between your hand and your foot while you're keeping the hi-hat on two and four. You can also switch things around and you can shake it up and play, you know, the ride pattern with your left hand, the snare with your right hand. The idea is that just like stick control, it's still a very versatile book and you can switch up these things. You can play them in different styles. And it also prepares you well for another book, which is called Progressive Steps to Syncopation for the Modern Drummer by Ted Reed, commonly just known as Syncopation. Syncopation is cool because I think it kind of combines the elements of those last two books into a method in which you take these rhythms and you take these patterns and you play them all these different ways.
Syncopation is also great for reading practice, reading through rhythms. There are pages of just rhythms written out just on a line. You can push your coordination, obviously, and gain more stylistic proficiency, but you're also getting better at reading because you're reading these rhythms as you go. These three books together will greatly improve the smoothness and fluidity of your playing. They really work your playing to a very high level technique wise where you're having to play a lot of fast, intricate things, a lot of subtleties, playing certain things quietly, certain things loudly, and really working on tying everything together into one cohesive unit so you're able to play something complex with all four limbs and it still sound good. This has a lot of benefits. So let's move on here to answering the question in the title. Are drum set books absolutely necessary? Well, let's talk about something here. There's something that I refer to as a technical ceiling, and I think a lot of other drummers talk about this too. It's the highest point at which your technique can get you. So let's say that you've got a very basic level of technique and you can play some eighth notes and some quarter notes. You can play a basic rock group. Well, in that case, your technique ceiling might be right here. And if you're playing a rock gig and you're playing rock grooves, you're probably gonna be coming up pretty close to bumping that technique ceiling all the time. Now, let's say you needed to play a jazz gig. Well, that's gonna be way above your technique ceiling, so you won't be able to do it. Now, let's say that you're a jazz drummer or you're an aspiring jazz drummer or a Latin drummer. In that case, your technique ceiling needs to be even higher than just for basic rock drumming because you've gotta play a lot of intricate patterns that involve a lot of coordination and a lot of finger technique. So in that case, you've gotta have a very high technical ceiling. That way, you know, you're not going past it when you're playing. But here's the thing, we don't wanna be bumping into that technical ceiling when we're playing, regardless of what style we're playing. If you're a rock drummer, you don't wanna be hitting that ceiling all the time. You wanna have a lot of excess, ample room. That way you can play comfortably, execute whatever you wanna play, and be able to enjoy the music and think about other more important things while you're playing, other than making sure that my right hand's happening with my right foot and that everything's staying together. So my point here is, make sure that you are able to develop, for you and in your playing, a technical ceiling that is much higher than the style of music that you are consistently playing. So if you're a rock drummer, learn some jazz stuff, learn some Latin stuff, that will raise your ceiling way above the standard rock drumming so that you will not have any technical issues in playing. You'll be able to think about more important things like time and feel and dynamics and song form and fills and you know playing musically and all those important things. And if you're playing all the time and you're finding yourself frustrated by issues like this, maybe coordination problems or technique things, working through these books could potentially really help you with that because it'll raise that ceiling and you won't be hitting that ceiling all the time because we don't want to be hitting a technique ceiling while we're playing. That's very frustrating. So having discussed that point, you can probably see now what my answer to the question is. I mean, no, method books aren't absolutely necessary. You can get by without them. You could be totally self-taught and never work through a method book. A lot of drummers have done that. But taking the time and the effort to work through these will increase your technical ceiling. That's a given. It will improve your playing, and you will become a better player from a technical standpoint by working through these books. If, you're, if you want to get very serious about this kind of thing, find a great teacher you can study with who can assist you in working through these. There are a lot of ways to play the exercises in these books. There are a lot of ways to work through them, and I can make more future videos about this if you guys are interested but a good teacher can help you very specifically navigate these different methods and get the most out of these books so as i hope you're able to see no method books aren't absolutely necessary but taking the time to work through them can have tremendous impact on your technical ability as a player you'll be able to go much further when you're not hitting that technical ceiling and you'll be increasing your arsenal of tools as a drummer. You will have more to pull from, you'll have more technique to reach for, more just general ability, and you're gonna be able to better execute every idea that you think of as you're playing. So I personally would say yes, uh, method books are necessary, but that's just my opinion, and I use them with all of my students just as teachers used them with me as I was first learning. But I'd love to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comments below. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. I hope this helped you out, and if this was something that's been on your mind or you're needing to improve your playing, bring it to another level, this could be the exact approach you need to take. So of course, let me know if you have any questions. Let's get conversations going in the comments below. And subscribers, thank you so much for watching my videos. I really appreciate you guys for supporting this channel and uh, joining me in all of this non-glamorous drum stuff as we grow together to become better drummers. So thanks guys, and I will see you next week.